Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number 1. Sorry, but I can't go and have a cup of coffee with you now. I've only done half the readings for the philosophy class tomorrow. And I thought I was a slow reader. What does the woman mean? Number two. I entered one of my new photographs in the newspaper's contest. If it's anything like the others you've shown me, I'm sure you'll come out on top. What does the man mean? Number three. You took the European literature class last year. Are you interested in selling me any of the books? I always hold on to them for future reference. What will the man probably do? Number four. I haven't heard from Janet since she entered medical school. I wonder how she's doing. Well, I understand she gave our department secretary her new address and phone number. Why don't you try to get in touch with her? What does the woman suggest the man do? Number five. Hi. I have a map of the campus, but I still can't find the building with the new sculpture exhibit in it. Can you tell me how to get there? That looks like an old map. Follow me. I'm going that way myself. What does the woman mean? Number six. I just got my traveler's checks for the trip to California. I hope $300 will be enough. I guess I'd better do that before Friday, huh? Maybe I can get to the bank tomorrow after physics class. What can be inferred about the woman? Number seven. Sally and Mark haven't been talking to each other lately. I wonder what happened. I haven't the faintest idea, but I'd stay out of it if I were you. What does the man mean? Number eight. Did you hear that my parents are planning a trip to Vancouver? What, Philip? What does the woman want to know? Number nine. I keep putting off getting my passport application. Thank goodness I didn't drag my feet on that one. What does the woman mean? Number 10. How about a couple of sets of tennis this weekend? I don't know. My game's a little rusty. What does the man imply? Number 11. Oh, what did you think about the discussion at lunch? I didn't realize people have such strong feelings about politics. Are you kidding? That subject always touches a nerve. What does the man mean? Number 12. I don't want to buy the book Professor Brown told us to read for the exam. Do you think you could lend me yours? Well, I'm not using it right now, but I really need to keep it handy just in case. What does the woman mean? Number 13. Look at that sky. I can't believe I forgot my umbrella again. We're almost there, Mary. I think we'll be able to make it. What can be inferred about the weather? Number 14. I don't know 
know why the university requires freshmen to live in the dorms for a whole year. Cheer up. You'll be able to live off campus next year if you want. What can be inferred about the woman? Number 15. So you and Julie are no longer roommates. I'm not surprised. You two never did seem very compatible. Yeah, well, it's not that we didn't get along. We just didn't have much in common. What can be inferred about the woman? Number 16. The glare was so intense, even my sunglasses didn't help. Look, if you take Route 27 in the late afternoon, you're driving straight into the sun. I'd consider an alternative. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 17. Remember when I said I might have to back out of the concert if I didn't have my history paper done yet? Well, guess what? That's okay. Do you know anyone else who enjoys jazz? What will the woman probably do? Number 18. Personally, I've never cared for the food at Sullivan's. I think it all depends on the chef's mood that day. What does the man imply? Number 19. You look worn out. Are you feeling under the weather? Not at all, but I have been putting in some long hours in the chemistry lab. What does the woman mean? Number 20. I think this coat is a great color, and the price is certainly right. How about the weight, though? Remember, we're supposed to have a really severe winter this year. What does the man imply about the coat? Number 21. Michelle, this is Jeff, our new reporter. Would you have some time today to show him around? You know, introduce him to the others, make him feel at home? I'd be happy to. Then after lunch, I can set him up at his desk so he can get to work. What will Jeff probably do after lunch? Number 22. Do the directions say we should go left or right at this stop sign? Hmm, that's funny. I don't actually see anything here about it. What does the man imply? Number 23. Someone told me the new restaurant on Grant Street is pretty good. The atmosphere is wonderful. But what's more important to you, good food or a nice atmosphere? What does the man imply? Number 24. So, what time does your art history class meet again? Two to five, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but the course is already full. What can be inferred about the woman? Number 25. I heard you just had your wisdom teeth removed. How do you feel? Actually, there's not much swelling, and I got something for the pain. What does the man mean? Number 26. I read that enrollment in the School of Business is on the rise. Well, that's been the trend for several years now. 
What does the woman imply? Number 27. It's 9.15. Did you just get to the lab? Yes. I was up late studying and I overslept again. I guess I need a louder alarm clock. What can be inferred about the man? Number 28. My parents think I ought to buy a computer, you know, now that I'm in college. But I hate to spend so much of my savings now. I'd say it's probably a worthwhile investment. What does the man mean? Number 29. Do we need to get the concert tickets in advance? There may be some for sale at the door at a higher price. What does the woman say about the tickets? Number 30. Are you free tonight? I'm meeting a few friends at the restaurant on Main Street. Oh, I'd love to, but I already have dinner plans for tonight. Another time, perhaps? What does the woman mean? Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two friends who are making plans. Do you have any plans this weekend? There's so much to choose from on campus that I'm not sure what I'm going to do. The football game's on Saturday night, and I'm going with a group of friends. Do you want to go with us? Of course I'd like to go to the football game. It's the biggest game of the season, and it sounds like fun to go with a large group of people. Good. We'll be meeting at the cafeteria for dinner at 6 o'clock on Saturday night, and then we'll go on to the game together. That takes care of my plans for Saturday night. But now I need to make a decision about Sunday afternoon. The music department is sponsoring a concert then, and I'd really like to hear that concert. But there's also a play being presented by the drama department that I really wanted to see. It's too bad those two events are at the same time. You know, if you go to the game on Saturday night and a concert or play on Sunday, that doesn't leave much time for studying. Ah, oh, well. Maybe I can do that the weekend after this one. Number 31. What is the woman planning to do Saturday? Number 32. Why does the man want to go to the football game? Number 33. What is at the same time as the music department's concert? Number 34. When does the man plan to study? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation between a man and a woman. Have you ever thought about all the tons of garbage that's out in space circling the Earth? Tons of garbage circling the Earth? What do you mean? I saw a television program about it last night, and according to the program, there's about 3,000 tons of metal out there in space traveling at speeds around 17,000 miles per hour. Where did all this garbage come from? Well, it comes from all those space missions that have gone up since 1957. Every time a rocket ship goes up into space, it leaves a lot behind, and this stuff goes into orbit around the Earth. 
booster rockets, solar panels, remnants of satellites, and even nuclear reactors. Isn't it dangerous to have all this stuff out there? Some space scientists are worried about possible collisions between this orbiting junk and spaceships, particularly manned spacecrafts. However, so far there hasn't been any such accidents. Well, I hope that they're going to do something about this, both for the sake of safety and for the sake of the environment. Me too. I know that right now the problem is being studied by numerous scientists. Hopefully, they'll be able to find solutions before the problem gets too much worse. Number 35. What are the man and woman discussing? Number 36. Where did the woman learn about this problem? Number 37. Approximately how much metal is in orbit in space? Number 38. What does the woman hope will happen? This is the end of Part B. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Today, we're going to be taking a tram tour through part of the Everglades National Park. Quite probably, we'll be seeing a number of crocodiles sunning themselves by the side of the water, or poking their heads up through the water. Needless to say, we will not be getting off the tram at any time until we leave the area, because of the danger posed by the crocodiles. By the way, you've probably heard the expression, crying crocodile tears. It is common to say that someone is crying crocodile tears, when he or she is pretending to be sad or full of regret. Crocodiles always appear to have tears in their eyes, but they are not crying because of sadness or even pretended sadness. Instead, a crocodile uses its tear ducts to get rid of extra salt from its body. A crocodile does not sweat the same way that humans do and must get rid of extra salt through tears. So if you see a crying crocodile, don't think that it's feeling sad. It is basically sweating through its eyes. Look! Over there on the right, there are two large crocodiles on the water's edge, right next to the fallen trees. You can get out your cameras and take pictures from here on the tram, but no, you cannot get off the tram to get any closer. Number 39. Where does this talk take place? Number 40. What does the expression crying crocodile tears mean when it is used to describe humans? Number 41. Why do crocodiles have tears in their eyes? Number 42. What does the tour guide recommend? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a talk about Hawaii. For those of you taking part in the trip to Hawaii next week, I'd like to give you a little information about the weather that you can expect there. You can expect the average daily temperature there to be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 
or 26 degrees Celsius. This is the average daily temperature in the springtime when we will be there. It is interesting to note that it only gets a few degrees warmer in the summer and a few degrees cooler in the winter. One important factor that keeps the temperature so constant and moderate in Hawaii is the trade winds. These are winds that blow in on the northeast or windward side of the islands on an almost daily basis. The trade winds blow through the islands an average of slightly more than 300 days per year, and they are the strongest during the heat of the afternoon and turn into a cooling breeze in the evening. The trade winds also keep the humidity down, which makes the weather even more pleasant. I hope this information will help you to understand the weather conditions that you're going to encounter next week on your trip. It should also help you decide what types of clothes you should be packing for your trip. Number 43. In what season of the year will the trip take place? Number 44. What is the weather like in Hawaii? Number 45. What is true about the trade winds? Number 46. What will the people listening to the talk probably be doing soon? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a talk by a librarian. Hello and welcome to the library. I'm Ms. Martin, the assistant librarian, and this is the library orientation tour for new graduate students in the business department. If you are not a newly admitted graduate student or your major is not business, then you are in the wrong place. Now let's get started. I'm sure you understand that, as graduate students, you'll be required to do a tremendous amount of research. Here at the library, we try to make this process as easy as possible for you. The library is open for extensive hours, from 7 a.m. until midnight, seven days a week, so that you'll have access to library research facilities almost any time that you want. During final exam week, the library is open 24 hours a day, and there are library staff members available to help you whenever the library is open. During this tour, we will be concentrating on two areas of the library. The first area is the computerized search facilities, which are located on the second floor of the library. On the computer systems located in this area, you can conduct computer searches for books as well as articles in magazines, newspapers, and journals. On the floor above the computer area are reference materials devoted specifically to business. In this area, you can find references for books and periodicals related to business and annual reports on major corporations. Now that we have completed this little introduction, we are ready to start the tour. Please follow me. Number 47. Who is Ms. Martin talking to? Number 48. What are the library's hours during final exam week? Number 49. What two areas will the tour concentrate on? Number 50. What are the students probably going to do next? <laughs> 